Doijong Financial, Mike Foster is one of the finest financial reporters, he writes, fear that global supplies of oil, oil are close to speak, speaking, sent <coughs> Uh, the dollar up to uh, oil up to 115 dollars per barrel last week. The price has risen by a third in the last three months alone. Unprecedented speculation in commodity futures totaling to 12 trillion dollars. The entire oil trade is only 400 billion dollars. But the derivative trade, oil bought and sold, who will buy the oil? Indian oil should buy the oil. But if Birla Mutual Fund begins buying oil, <laughs> they have nothing to do with oil. Who will sell oil? Omar oil will sell oil. If Japan of India begins to sell oil, they don't have oil, they sell oil futures. You don't need oil, you buy the oil option. This is what resulted in actually says a total expo uh, 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 exposures are close to 14 trillion dollars which is equal to the GDP of America. You create a market which doesn't exist. You create supplies which do not exist. We create, you create demand which does not exist. So you create a price which does not exist. How do you factor in that market price in your business? That is the issue. The IFR principles say, which are being adopted because unfortunately the Prime Minister of India had accepted the G20 meeting that India will follow the IFRS model without knowing the consequences. For example, in the business, Mr. Justice Rajeshwaran said that the values shown in the balance sheet of a company in respect of assets, very early assets, for example, in the entire Bombay textile issue, the most important thing is the value of the more property. The mills have become bankrupt, the employees are gone, the credit cards are waiting, the land is there, and no one knows the value of the land. So, market value is very, very important. And market value is important mostly for insolvents. It is not important for those who run the businesses. And for example, we have bought properties. All of us are having own houses, most of us. And we may have bought the property in the year 1960, 1970, 1980 for 5 lakh, 2 lakh, 3 lakh. That property will be worth 3 crores. But in your house, in your mind, it is not three crores, it is your house, that's all. But in America, what they did? They converted the house into something like stock. Everybody began seeing the value of the houses having gone up and began borrowing against their property value. And when the property values collapsed and the bankers began demanding the money because there was no sufficient value to cover, that became the US our own crisis, which became the global crisis. What I am saying is, properties which should not be valued psychologically also, they were not only valued psychologically, they were valued commercially, they were commercially transacted, on the basis money was lent, and that all the mortgages that were lent to the Americans were consolidated into what is known as CDO, consolidated debt obligations, and sold to other countries and other banks in the world. And when the Americans could not pay, the American banks defaulted. As a result, the which became a global crisis. So valuation should not get in certain areas. Just as human beings should not be valued in terms of price. You know the consequence. And a man is valued in terms of price. Whether it is the valuer, whether it is the charge of accountant, whether it is the lawyer. And I don't want to say in the presence of Mr. Justice, if it is the justice also, you can understand the consequences. The judge is sitting at a very high position. As a chartered accountant, I am sitting in a lesser position with almost the same responsibility. You are sitting in another position with the same responsibility. 
because our judgments affect somebody or the other. So we should not be prized. Our conscience should not be prized. We should be valued. That is why I feel valuing function is a pricing function. It applies to commodity. So we should actually think of removing the idea of valuation. We should call it pricing function, price determination. Price is the institution of price determiners. That is the problem. <laughs> so, valuation is a higher function. We all have value. We don't have price. But when price gets connected to a person, you know what is happening in the profession of lawyers today? There are lawyers who charge 20 lakh rupees per appearance in the Supreme Court. They have no value. There is a price tag attached to them. So in India, fortunately, certain assets are not regarded as price determinable. Home is one set. In America, they did not do it because of which they got into a huge financial crisis. So first thing is, no, this is oil. Oil I can understand is a global goods. It's a global commodity. Produced in one place, used everywhere. But, you know what is the uh, take for instance rice. International studies show that almost all the rice or wheat produced, 90%, is sold within a radius of 60 miles. It is a local commodity. Only very marginal 5-10% travel to outside places. When these agricultural commodities are put into options and options and futures, see what is the consequence. In America, the farmers who are supposed to be very, very informed, who know options, futures, who trade in options, futures, what is their position? Vastly grain holding brings farmers, consumers to near ruin. Farmers also. It is Bloomberg report of April 28, 2008. At that time, the agricultural commodity prices hit the roofing all over the world. Commodity index funds. Commodity index funds. It has nothing to do with the user of the commodity or the producer of the commodity. Control a record 4.51 billion bushels of corn, wheat and soya bean through futures equal to half the amount of the commodities held in U.S. I.O. 50% of the supply is in the hands of the financial institutions who are neither traders nor users nor producers. The holding jumped to 29% in the past year as investors began buying commodities because the interest rate came down so much there was no money in lending. So they shifted their investment from stocks and lending to commodity trading. That was one of the reasons why from 2007 onwards, all over the world there were huge increase in commodity prices. I don't want to go into it more because it's a very sad story as to how the American Senate found that the entire reason for the rise of the commodity prices in the first three months of 2008 alone, the rice prices went up in America by 60%. Why I refer to this is, that is the market price rate. The market price is not fixed according to the demand and supply of a particular commodity by the producers and users of the commodity. There is a huge financial intervention, interloping, interlocution, mediation by Financial shocks was nothing to do with the trade in the commodity. And they determine the market price. They determine the prices of your property today. They determine the property, the property uh, uh, prices of oil, price of corn, prices of anything. And now comes the rules. March to market. And how wrong even to think of the principle being adopted, I will just give you what 
is the market capitalization of the world in the last 10 years? In 1996, the world market capitalization was 18 trillion dollars. In 1999, it doubled to 36 trillion dollars. It is the dot-com bubble, which all of you know. And in 2002, it came down to 20 trillion dollars. In 2007, it went up to 61 trillion dollars. It tripled. And in February 2009, it became 28 trillion dollars, less than 20 percent. And in March 2010, it became 49 trillion dollars. Can you bring this market value into a balance? What will happen to your balance? I suppose this is one of the most impractical ideas. Why is it being brought in in America? In America it is being resisted. What happened in those days when the market values and everything was going up, houses, corn, oil, uh, stock, they were going up. All the financial bodies, whether it is hedge fund or mutual fund, they wanted to incorporate the latest market price in order to borrow money against the property. Whether it is share, whether it is property, whether it is anything. So they were very keen to incorporate the market value in, for example, if I bought oil at uh, $100 and after 15 days it became $110. I wanted to value my oil derivative at $110 and borrow money against it. This was happening and this is what led to the crisis in 2008. Now the values have gone down and so they are not able to adopt the same formula because if they book the fall in the value of the asset, there will be no balance sheet. This is the problem of America. Fortunately, we have no such problem because we did not create the problem. Americans have created the problem and so they do not know how to solve the problem. And so there is opinion for and against in America that when the market value was good, you were adopting the market value. When the market is bad, you don't want to adopt the market value. And you have to know adopt the market value is one opinion. The other opinion is if you adopt the market value, there will be no American financial system. So the American Security Exchange Commission wrote to all these financial bodies saying that you do what you want because that was the only way of handling the problem. But in India, we have no such problem. Fortunately, the conservative Indian mind has never adopted market value to push up its balance sheet. Except in the case of mutual funds which are intended for that purpose because the net asset value has to be disclosed every month. And so they have to compute the market value because people enter the mutual funds, enter on the basis of the market value, you exit on the basis of the market value. So the mutual funds business requires valuation on a regular basis. Other than that, there is no question of incorporating the market value because you bought a property for a company at 1 crore and the property is worth 1000 crores today. If you bring it into the balance sheet and show it as profit, how imaginary that profit is? As that profit is in relationship. Unfortunately, that is becoming the law from 1st April 2011. It is going to be a disaster. And what is the rule for financial market is becoming the rule for the real market. The real economy is going to get disrupted because of it. But there is absolutely no debate in India because nobody understands all this. Even the media doesn't understand the impact of it. The Chartered Accountant Institute says, what will I do the Prime Minister has committed? The Prime Minister does not know what he has committed. <laughs> So you can understand the terrible problem into which the institution of valuers, the valuation business is getting 